we are in the midst of redefining what we think are the key characteristics of a successful global organization. Uh, we can see that what was true three years ago is not going to be true three years from now because the world is in such a dynamic moment. And so we are focusing especially on training for agility and training for getting decision making to the edges with our teams. Uh, to do that in an environment where you're a global industrial champion, though, requires a deep level of trust uh, because it's really easy to grab decision making, pull it into the headquarters and try to centralize everything. Today's technology lets you do that easily. Uh, but to, to avoid that instinct and instead to push decision making out so we get agility and we get investment in those local country to company relationships is a real priority for us. Um, I, I will tell you that you know, it's, not a, it's not so much a management system uh, that is the key ingredient to making that happen, but it's the right culture. We have to make sure that Boeing people in all 65 plus countries where we operate understand Boeing, operate and behave as Boeing. And so we're investing a tremendous amount of time and resources right now in behaviors. We call them the Boeing behaviors. And this is all about changing culture, transforming the culture, and helping the company think in very particular ways about individuals' roles. We now score our executives, and it ties directly to their compensation on how they behave. How are they collaborating across business units? Are they acting as one Boeing? Or are they trying to optimize just inside their narrow platform services or functional responsibility? You know, we are looking at how, are, how, are the, how is the team listening? How is the team innovating? Is there space for new ideas? Is there any track record of ideas that were not invented here succeeding? Or are they all shut down? As we look at these behaviors and make those a part of management incentive and compensation, I hope we're driving the change deep into the organization. So that it's not just even structural, but it actually is very human. And it's about how individual humans behave. Remember, we have 150,000 people in more than 65 countries. And so we're trying to get a big ship to turn uh, and to think differently and behave differently and to really own this one Boeing approach where we leverage engineering capability across our business units, where we de develop vertical capabilities for example, in, in something like avionics, the, the brains of the, of the airplane, that can supply into our commercial business, our defense business, and our services business. And this is just a new approach. And so we, we can change the architecture, verticals, services, but if we don't change the culture, I'm sure we won't win. And so that's why we're focused so much on changing culture. You can go on and on with the kind of changes that are, are running the world a little bit ragged on the geopolitical edge, but at the exact same time there's this technology change that's equally going to run us ragged. And so the introduction of machine learning and artificial intelligence, the need for us to move towards a services frame of perspective from being a platform perspective company, that's a big uh, change for us. And so it's, it, part of it's changing mindset. You know, we recently created a third business unit inside Boeing that's focused just on services, because before services was really subsidiary to platforms. But in a world of data-enabled uh, performance logistics and the like, performance-based logistics, all of a sudden you have to have a different architecture in the company to address the change that's coming in the technology. And so, yeah, every, everybody is wrestling with right now how to adjust to such a dynamic environment. And the key thing, of course, comes back down to how fast can you respond sensibly? Uh, we don't want to just gyrate wildly in the face of changes but we do want to be agile. So we're in the middle of an acquisition of Embraer. That's a great example of us building out global scale and depth. We are in the middle of investing in things like personal autonomous flight vehicles. Um, that's about disrupting ourselves with technology around flight. Uh, we are in the middle of building new capabilities around advanced manufacturing, robotics, additive, things that we need to disrupt how we build. Each of those is a piece of uh, driving a change agenda inside the company. I think a few years ago, it was very easy for everybody in the company to think of you know, our European airplane competitor or our largest US defense competitor and to see those two as our principal competitors. In today's world, you know, think about the GAFAs, the Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazons of the world. They're competitors because they're entering into disruptive mobility. They are entering into performance-based logistics and machine learning and how it will disrupt supply chains and the management of inventories. These are things that we do when we provide to our customers. Five years ago, we weren't necessarily looking to ourselves be the ones who disrupted the 737 program. But today, we recognize that autonomy 
is a reality, that personal flight's a reality, that doing it on electric propulsion is going to be a reality for those small personal vehicles. And we need to be the ones who are first into that space and build the muscle first. Uh, and so that commitment of money uh, into the leading edge science is so important. So we're doing that. I think all of those investments start pointing towards a company that we think will look very different 50 years from now than it does today.